Taking exams and studying can be very stressful for a lot of people. Many students don't have solid strategies that they can implement when studying. Some of them might just read through their notes, read through the textbook, or maybe just do some practice tests, but they're kind of just stumbling along seeing what sticks. But if you have a solid method, you'd be a lot less stressed during the exam season. And over my last five years of engineering, I've learned and developed one skill in particular to help me become less stressed during my exam season and do better on my exams overall. And that skill would be to create a cheat sheet. We do not cheat in this class. No, not that kind of cheat sheet. In this video, I'll explain why cheat sheets are so useful, what they really are, and how you can actually make one that will work for you and help you do well on your exam. I'll also make sure to show you my actual cheat sheets that I use in school. But before I do, if you're new here, my name is Tamer and I'm a final year mechanical engineering student at the University of Waterloo. All right, let's get into the video. Plain and simple, to make a cheat sheet, you take a blank piece of paper and you fill it in with as much information as you can from the stuff you learn in your courses. Now, some professors do allow you to bring your cheat sheet with you to the exam, but some don't. It's almost 50-50. But whether or not your teacher allows you to take the cheat sheet with you to the exam, you should always make one. Most people think that they should fill this empty white piece of paper with as much information as possible until there's no more white space left. But that's not exactly how you should do it. I've seen people literally print every single PowerPoint slide on this white piece of paper and bring it with them to the exam. I've even seen people write so small in so many different angles until there's no more white space left. Both of those methods are terrible ways to make a cheat sheet because the cheat sheet is supposed to be easy to read and simple to understand. So if you're writing it in a way and you can barely understand it, then there's no point of it. You're never gonna even use it on the exam. It took me five years of engineering to finally figure out why it's so hard. Like I've always known it's hard, but I could never pinpoint why until now. So here's why. In engineering, we learned so many concepts. Some of them are pretty abstract and confusing at first. Like one day we're learning about Newton's third law, then we're learning about Navier-Stokes equations, then partial differential equations, then planetary gear systems, then stress string curves, and DC shunt machines, followed by magnetic flux density and Laplace transforms, and oh, let's not forget about flip-flops and computational logic. Oh, sorry, I kind of went on a rant there, but I guess I just have a little bit of PTSD. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that when we study engineering, we learn so many concepts that initially don't make sense. But once we take a step back, look at everything that was taught separately, and then we try to connect them, things start to make a little bit of sense. Think about it like this, studying engineering is literally like building a puzzle. Now alone, this one puzzle piece doesn't mean anything. You can look at it all you want, but you're not gonna be able to understand what the picture is trying to tell you. It's not until you take all the puzzle pieces, put them together, that you begin to understand what that one piece among all the others were actually trying to show you. And that is exactly what a cheat sheet would do for you. It takes all these abstract concepts that initially make no sense and connects them together so you can see the bigger picture overall. And once that happens, you begin to understand the course very well. So long story short, make a cheat sheet and thank me later. But here's how. There are two approaches that you can do when it comes to making a cheat sheet. You can either review your notes, make a cheat sheet, and then use that cheat sheet to solve problem set questions and practice exams. Or you can review your notes, do a ton of problem set questions and practice exams, then make your cheat sheet. Both are good, but I prefer the second method because if you make a cheat sheet at the end of all of your study sessions, then you know for sure that you've covered every concept in the course. In terms of the exact process of making one, there's five steps. Initial note taking and revision, finding the key points and asking questions, compiling it, using it, and then keeping it for future records. Or I guess IFCUK for short. Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. Oh, that almost sounded badly, you know, if you switch that. It's okay. Anyways, whether you have lectures in person or online, you start out by doing one of two things. Either print the PowerPoint slides that your teacher or professor has made for you and then add notes on top of that. Or if your teacher doesn't have any PowerPoint slides, then grab a pencil and a piece of paper and start making your notes based on what the professor or teacher is saying in class. Do this for every single lecture of the semester and you'll now have notes for everything that's being taught in the course. Now about two weeks before your exam, Go through these notes and quickly read them and just sort of try to understand the idea of what these notes are trying to tell you. And if you don't understand them yet, that's completely normal, this is only the first step. For reference, here's an example of what my initial notes look like. These were notes that I took in class during my introductory mechanical design lecture. Now with these notes, I'll title them based on the chapter in the textbook that it correlates to. I'll also add a date for each lecture, so I keep everything in order. And here in this lecture, we were learning about the topic of bending. The professor first explains the concept, does an example, then elaborates further using charts, diagrams, and equations. I'll usually put red boxes around important equations and underlying key terms. That way, when I'm adding this part of the course in my cheat sheet, I sort of already have an idea of what's important. 
Now that we have these rough notes that we took in class with red boxes on the important equations and important key terms underlined and highlighted, we'll take it one step further after the lecture is over and we'll continue to look at these notes and try to sort of understand what the main overall message is. Now I'll also spend some time asking questions about what was just taught and I'll attempt to practice questions for the math portion of the course. For example, on that day, we'll learn about a formula called the Flexure Formula. And I noticed that the professor used it in an example, and not just one, but used it in several examples. So now I know that this formula is important, and I'll make sure to put a box around it. That way, I know to add it in my cheat sheet later on when I create it. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. It's about two weeks before your exam, and the first thing you have to do is grab a rough piece of paper and go through all your notes from that course. Then put in all the important equations and key terms that you've used a lot in the past and repeat this process for every single lecture you have in that course. Now take this rough piece of paper and use it while you're doing practice questions, problem sets, and practice exams. For example, while I'm doing this problem set, I'll have a piece of paper right next to me so I can quickly refer to it You know, when I need to go back and check important concepts or important equations instead of having to dig through my notes. Also, while I'm doing the problem set or practice exams, if I come across any new concept, I'll make sure to add that in my rough sort of piece of paper on the side. This rough piece of paper might be more than one page and might have, you know, random things all over the place. So the next step would be to take this rough piece of paper and compile it into one page. If you have a look at my cheat sheet from my mechanical design course, here are some examples of how I condense my lectures. The lecture I had on bending was condensed into this little box right here. And everything you see on this paper is a summary of the entire course. Once the cheat sheet is complete, pretend like you're a teacher and explain it to yourself or even explain it to a friend of yours. And if there's something on the cheat sheet that I don't understand or I can't explain, I'll take a step back, look through my notes and try to figure out how I can understand it or I'll go online and try to see if I can find the answer there. But the main idea and the main purpose behind doing this is to be able to master every single concept of the course. Also, because mainly engineering courses tend to be very mathy and numbers based, I'll use this cheat sheet while I saw practice tests or final practice exams. But I only do this if the professor allows me to bring the cheat sheet with me to the exam. That way, when I go to the exam, I know exactly where everything is because I've had practice using this cheat sheet. The last thing I want is to waste time on the exam trying to find where a particular equation is. Now, you should have a pretty good cheat sheet and you should have mastered a lot of concepts in the course. So take care of yourself. Don't stress about the exam because you did everything that you can. But once the exam is done, I know it can be tempting to just throw away that cheat sheet or throw away your notes. But I really don't think you should do that. Keep it because you might need to refer to this cheat sheet later on in your upper years. I personally kept all my notes and all my cheat sheets throughout my entire time through university. And to be honest, I've actually needed to refer back to it quite a few times, especially when I've taken more advanced courses. Fun fact, I've also kept all my notes from high school, but those I rarely refer to, to be honest. Now that we've established how to make a cheat sheet, I'll show you some of the cheat sheets that I've made throughout some of my courses in engineering. Now, I don't have all my cheat sheets because some professors do ask us to give them the cheat sheet back after the exam is over. Anyways, this right here was the first ever cheat sheet that I've made for a chemistry course I took in my first year. I wrote so small and filled it with so much information to the point where I got tired of writing so small that I decided to take it easy and start writing bigger towards the end. Now this cheat sheet was pretty useless for me because it was mostly words instead of equations. So after the exam, I learned to put equations, diagrams, and charts on my cheat sheets instead so I can actually make good use of them. Next up, this was my cheat sheet for a second year calculus course. In this one, I made sure to write big enough so I could read it, and it mainly consisted of diagrams and equations. Here's another example of a cheat sheet, but this one I wasn't allowed to bring with me to the exam. Uh, I had to memorize all the equations that you see here. Next up, this is my cheat sheet for thermodynamics. Again, a ton of diagrams and equations. However, this course had a lot of rules that I needed to refer to, so that's why you probably see a lot of words in this cheat sheet. Here's another cheat sheet for a course I took called Partial Differential Equations. This course had so many abstract equations and concepts and very detailed steps that you needed to follow to solve the question. So I made sure to write down a number of those steps in my cheat sheet. Finally, this cheat sheet right here was for a course called Control Systems. And I filled it with diagrams, charts, and equations to really just illustrate the concept of the course. So for all six cheat sheets that I've showed you, I basically took three or four months worth of lecture content and condensed it down into one piece of paper. And if you want to have a closer look on the cheat sheets that I've showed you in this video, I'll make sure to add a link to them in the description. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!